pottery shards the shards are the broken pottery which are commonly found in the village life of most cultures why am i speaking here and this uh, broader topic of bayachar is traditionally bayachar along with pottery shards together as well as many other rural trash elements contributed to improving the fertility of the soils so in this process one of the elements apart from biochar that uh, we need to recognize and appreciate is pottery shard by nature as a thumb rule i say if biochar is having 100% good properties for changing the soil nature for a improved fertility and uh, improved qualities of soil then pottery shards have at least 50% of the values this is because uh, if we see uh, both things together even at a microscope level when pottery is made it is nothing but the burnt earth it has lots of uh, porosity the simple thing that one could observe is the water in a pot is always cooler that is because of this micro pores and uh, capillary action and uh, the water holding nature of the pottery shards all these principles make uh, the pottery an integral part of all cultures pottery is used right from the tiles of the roof for cooking utensils or cultural pots say used in marriages during birth of a child or even at the time of cremation or burial related to the death of a person for good bad and all occasions and especially the festivals the pots were used tons and tons of this uh, pottery shards became part of the rural trash during the utility during the use several pots used to get broken and new pots used to be made so that way always this pottery shards remained part of the soil pottery shards when broken they were always mended with the compost say farmyard manure pit and then this is transferred to the fields that's why even for the archaeology departments when they are studying a new excavation two important aspects remain with them that is the charcoal pieces also indicate that people were living and uh, they can use the charcoal for radio carbon dating and exactly identify when people lived there as well as the pottery shards by shape size and even the patterns on them they could establish the timeline also and uh, this pottery shards they remain for longer periods in the soils and uh, they doesn't get uh, uh, decomposed or degraded so easily so that is one reason uh, they add value to the soil like uh, biochar pottery shards have multiple uses 
and uh, eventually reaching agricultural fields and soils in rural areas. The remains from potter's kilns, a combination of charcoal, pottery shards and a little ash have always been a valuable resource for improving soil fertility. Although the addition of charcoal to soils has long been practiced, it was not widespread and remained only a traditional practice in India. Because of such good practices, agricultural activity is still sustainable in many parts of India. Although the addition of charcoal to soils has long been practiced, it was not widespread and uh, remained only a traditional practice in India. Because of such good practices, agricultural activity is still sustainable in many parts of India. Wherever agriculture was the main livelihood, high densities of population existed. When civilization was at its peak and space was a constraint, human beings came up with innovative practices that have proved to be sustainable until today. Today means, say for the past 30-40 years back. Charcoal, ash and pottery shards are the most common byproducts of human habitats. Their use or reuse are an example of innovative practices that emerged out of lack of space and resources. Invariably, some amount of biochar and ash was produced by the customary activities of people living in traditional settlements in the past. At this point, there are many parts of the world where the availability of such byproducts in sufficient quantities and their ingenious use and management remain under development. Let us see in how many different ways the pottery shards uh, existed from different activities of the people, say the cooking pots and uh, water purification. Let us see the various ways pottery shards from different parts of rural India existed. The pottery used in cooking, pots used for storing water, slash and burn, the baked earth that resulted, crop residue burning, baked earth is there, forest fires, baked earth is there, potters clean pottery shirts, community kitchens, hotels, schools, temples, pottery shirts, Baked clay pottery is quite popular with millions of pieces still produced and used in India. A large number of the rural poor cook food in clay pots. Pots are also commonly used to collect and store drinking water, especially during summers. Water evaporation from the fine pores of these pots cools the water inside it. The temperature is at least 5 degrees centigrade cooler than the surrounding air temperature. The cooling effect is especially high under relatively less humid conditions. Roofs made of clay tiles also provide cool shelter and are very useful in the tropics where temperatures are very high during the summer months. For almost all types of festivals, events and occasions, pottery is used in the rituals. In many parts of India, pottery is continually in use. For all these reasons, large quantities of pottery shards regularly contribute to rural trash, which eventually finds its way into soil. 
the clay from local water bodies say tanks ponds lakes rivers etc is used for making pottery the organic carbon content in this clay is around 0.9% such clay is mixed with ash charcoal powder from the kilns and sometimes sand quartz is also used the availability of water bodies determines access to clay and sand for pottery so where the pottery are produced in large quantities that is determined on the availability of this base materials pieces of broken parts are usually disposed of in form made manure pits as the manure is applied and spread over the fields the pottery shards are also spread with time the size of the pottery shards reduces due to breaking eventually over several years the pottery shards spread out more widely the density of occurrence of pottery shards varies from field to field as seen uh, where the fields are close to the villages there the pottery shards density is more Historically the use of biochar was mostly a cultural or traditional practice however the Japanese still use bamboo charcoal in many ways biochar is not a new invention but there is a need to rediscover its use and evolve new uses potter's kilns residual material from traditional potter's kilns is a good additive for the soils the association between charcoal and pottery shards is a long standing tradition during the production of pottery in the kiln or retort the baking process is slow in the kiln the biomass used as fuel gets converted into biochar and ash broken pottery and biochar are left behind this mix of by products improves the soil condition when applied farmers and traditional potters know this quite well considering the by products gold for soil this happened with me i was working in one village i requested a potter to share his uh, material from the potter's kiln uh, so that i could uh, do my experimentation in some other farmer's field he said in his own words although they have very less land and uh, their occupation is mostly dependent on making pottery but he used this word it is like gold for them so they cannot spare to any other person because this has all those ingredients which improve the fertility of their soil so let us see what are the residues from potter's kilns that include charcoal mostly from the wood used in the baking of the pottery and ash from the straw and wood used in the process broken pieces of pots some pots break during the baking process and a burnt soil used to cover the kiln together the above components result in a good additive for acidic soils potters rarely share them with others they prefer to use them in their own fields 